Hi everyone, so today I have some fun new items to share with you. They're more of, you know, essential items that Spellbinders has brought to their site. Um, this did launch a few weeks ago and I'm so sorry I had mentioned that I was going to have their, you know, their new paper trimmer and kept talking about it and then now I'm like, huh, it's not arriving. Something happened in my mailbox. We have like a community mailbox. I guess it was compromised somehow or broken into. I'm not sure. I really don't know because just the neighbors had left a little tag on there saying, hey, you need to go get your mail at the post office. Uh, you think the post office would have left like something on my door saying, hey, we're not going to deliver mail. So they haven't been delivering mail in like weeks. I didn't realize because I hardly ever check the box. It's a mostly junk mail, you know, so that meant packages too, apparently. So I go over there and lo and behold, my package is there. So sorry, guys, I've been teasing you about, oh, I'll try it out, I'll try it out. It's going to be here soon. And uh, it's been sitting at the post office. So um, <laughs> thanks for the patience. And um, we're going to check it out today. So these items were initially sent free of charge from our review. And of course, all opinions are my own. And any links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you have purchased items through those links. Quickly on top here, what I have are the extended cutting pads in the beautiful teal color. So they have these, um, you know, teal and like maybe glittery plates of the regular, you know, cutting pads that are like this guy. I have a gold one here that's been well loved for, I mean, over a year. Look at that. I'm just showing it to you because a lot of times people are like, how do you keep your plates from bowing or bending or, you know, warping? And I don't know. I've cut into this tons and tons of times. I'm always um, flipping it, you know, back in not back and forth, but like uh, the top or the bottom. And I always keep one not cut into, and now as you can see after a while, it still gets like etchings of the die, but not cut into like this one, right? Um, and I keep one clean just because it's nice and flat and straight. And you know, sometimes you have specialty papers that will definitely take the look of this onto the paper. So I always keep one nice and clean. Um, this one, I'll probably have to start using this as a cutting plate now and do another one um, as the clean plate because um, it's just getting a lot of the etchings. But again, as many times as you see this, that's how many times this has been run through. And I mean, they're both really straight. I don't know what to tell you. I just use the least amount of pressure in my sandwiches that gets the job done. These are platinum six plates. Um, you can also run them through the larger machine, of course. Um, they're just, you know, going to be faster to run them through than the large, large plates for the larger machine. But these are for the platinum six type um, uh, or platinum uh, spellbinder system, right? So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've always had good luck with things like this, though, with any brand that I've used. And again, I always use the skinniest sandwich that'll get the job done. So, um, this is the cutting plates that go along with the, um, the universal, well, yeah, basically the universal system. And, um, because they are longer and the longer plates go to this one, right? The universal plates are longer than your basic plates. Um, so, uh, it's just something new they brought out. So it is a pair of plates. You get two of them. So I will start using these in my video so you can just see them, uh, when we need them, uh, at that point. But you know, you saw the other ones, they're no different. They're not a different material. They're just longer and then and that beautiful teal color so I will put those over here with the rest of my plates and then this guy is the one we'll, we'll be trying today so in my mind um, I'm thinking we need to do something that takes cutting and scoring because um, this does both of those things so we have replacement cutting blades I don't think they have replacement scoring blade if they do I'll have that linked also um, because basically the scoring blade shouldn't dull after a while obviously cutting uh, blades do start dulling or just not as crisp as before so they do have a replacement set it looks like these two and this is what it looks like on the side there and then this is the trimmer itself and it is a big boy and it's a 12 inch cutting and scoring length and what i love about that is i've had other systems where they do have um, a scoring blade and a trimmer but they're both going to be stacked on top of each other over here. Like by the time you get down here, you can't really use the whole 12 inches of the space or whatever it is because there's something else in the way. So you have to pop it out and then work it and then pop it back in and all that kind of stuff. So with this one, if you can see, it's tucked away. So it tucks up here and it also tucks up here so you can get the full extension of like the whole... 12 inch um, length here as far as cutting and uh, scoring so that's really great even this whole area is 12 and a half inches so it tucks away but it also gives you that full 12 there and then maybe just a little extra um, 
so we can read about it really quickly. Um, oh, let's carefully peel off clear protective film before using. Funny about that is I, I'll probably leave it, but unless it's obstructive, uh, I just leave it. But anyhow, uh, recommended cutting only one sheet of cardstock at a time to ensure cutting accuracy. And what that's about is like, let's say you have your paper in there and you're holding it and you have maybe two or three, maybe thinner sheets. When you start going like this, it starts kind of moving anyway. So by the time the third paper... I'm not saying the blade moves, like the paper starts shifting. By the time you get there, it's kind of displaced already, and then it's just a little bit off on like the second or third piece of paper you have. So, um, you know, you can try it out, but that's basically what, why they're recommending one at a time. You have your extension arm. So, of course, this guy itself is, um, you know, just over six inches, maybe six and a half wide, but you have your extension arm. And what I love about the extension arm, and sometimes other companies, I've had other, you know, um, trimmers, they don't have a lip at the end. So you place it here, but then over here, you know, your paper can get kind of wonky possibly because there's nothing holding it back. You're just eyeballing at that point. Um, and here, it does have a lip. So the paper, once this is extended, will follow that whole channel, which I really, really love. Um, yeah, so extension arm on the left side of the trimmer can be left closed to cut paper up to six inches, like if you just leave it alone. Um, and then all the way up to 17 and a quarter. So they didn't just end at the 12 inches on that one, so that's really nice. Um, and then when you close it, extension arm will click into place. It has the rubberized feet, so hopefully you know, for your grip there. Transparent cutting rail, which is great, so we will check that out. It accommodates both cutting and scoring blades with room to store up to two at a time. The rigid cut rail ensures straight cuts and they're talking about this whole area here. And then again, the cutting and scoring. So you have your cutting blade is the gray one and your scoring is the lighter color. And then it does have replacement cutting blades. It doesn't say anything about replacement scoring blades. So, oh, and then how to change the blade carriage is also written on there. And they also have that info on their site. And I meant to mention at the beginning that they are currently having a Halloween sale. It's not just Halloween items. It's um, a lot of the previous, like, um, club kits and things like that they're like 30 percent off maybe that's what i was looking at when i was kind of doing the math as i was seeing the pricing on them and things like that so i will link that sale in the description box because again it's more a lot of christmas stuff actually it's just a halloween time sale but it doesn't mean it's strictly halloween items um oh i did see that the wax seal kit is in there about 30 ish percent off also so let me just bring this open and as you know if you are a club member you get your 10% off all the time so generally that works on the sales too it'll be 10% less than um, what somebody might see if they're not a club member okay so we have this guy again little clear like silicone feeling rubberized feet all in the corners on the center feels really sturdy I love the color real crisp it's kind of like an off-white creamy um, oh, yes. Okay, so as far as this is concerned, I want to see, yeah, it just holds on really nicely. So you can see there's little areas on both sides. I know. There we go. It just pops up, but you can hold, so hold it there nicely. And then these guys, again, will go up and down this channel. I want to mention, it says when you're replacing a blade to bring it down towards you. So let's just have this one since it's already here. And let me see. There it is. Okay. It did mention that there's an area where the blade comes out, or can. It's right here. I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of a difference right there than everywhere else. There's like the slightest little, um, I don't know that you can see it better if I have something behind there, but there's almost like arrows, but not really. So what they said is as you bring it down towards you to start to just go like that, basically, boop. That was easy. I thought I was going to like really work it. So um, in that same little groove, and it's very slight and minimum because obviously as you're running this, you don't want this to get caught and come out when you don't want it to. So it's just like a little bit more open here, like notched away than anywhere else. And when you go to replace it, you just bring it down into that spot and it just goes right back in. So I just showed you that one. Let's do this guy. So as I'm coming through, as you can see, it's not happening unless I want it to happen, right? So if I come here, I'm at that spot, I'm clicking up straight up and then just keep bringing it out. <laughs> Maybe I should have had my finger so close there. That is a deep blade. Cool. Okay, so then to put it back, you just put it right back in there. Look, it's almost like a 90 degree angle here. We're going right back in there and then it'll just kind of bring it in and it goes right back in, okay? And it's only here. I don't believe it's at the top yet. That's the only spot. So it's like around the 12, almost 12, 11 and three quarters mark is where I see that little notch. 
And then again, it clicks down. I like that you have this little area too that you can kind of open it that way. And then this guy is really, really taut. Like that's in there really nicely. Ooh, let me see. There we go. Okay. There you go. You have that notch that kind of helps you push it out too. And then all the way out here and it clicks in there too. This is super sturdy. I don't know if you hear that. But you have that whole extension and really nice. Again, now all the way out to 17 and a quarter, all the way this way. Most of the paper I work with is like within this eight and a half, you know, kind of area. But um, there you go. And we're just going to store that back away. So I think for today's video, so we can watch or see both of these features in action, we should make like a stepper card or like a box. I know a stepper card, sometimes they give you some numbers that people are like, you know, eyes glaze over here. So maybe we'll do a box that's easier, but I can show you how you can score with it and cut on here. Maybe we'll cut an aperture like I did recently in another video and, um, and show you like, the options that a paper trimmer gives you where a guillotine doesn't, right? With a guillotine, you're just making cuts. Like, you're not going to get an aperture out of a guillotine. Um, at least not that, I mean, I don't even see how you would do it. Maybe fold your paper in half and then cut only to a certain area and then unfold. I don't even know, honestly. Um, so that's why paper trimmers are really funny. There's lots of tricks you can do with them. So let me just think about what I want to do. Maybe we'll just make a simple box. Um, and I will grab some paper and I'll be right back. You know what? I have this big Make It Merry um, Christmas kit. And what I think I'll do is go through and find some papers that I would like to make a box with. And maybe, like I said, maybe we'll do an aperture. So maybe on the aperture. Oh, my little pine cone ran away. I'll put something. Oh, this one. That's cute. Because we can make a box that's not too big. Let's say we have an aperture and then we have this little guy there and maybe some other little bits, but we'll focus on this guy being the main thing. So I'm going to go through this. Just find some paper in here. As you can see, it's well used here, well loved. Ooh, do we have red? I have some black. That'd be really pretty too. Okay, let's grab the black paper and the red paper, this bright red one. And I'm going to let that dictate the size of my boxes because obviously I only have so much of the red paper here. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to come up with some numbers real quick. <laughs> let's see here. If this guy is about three inches, I would say, let's say we're going to do a four inch box. And recently I've been making lots of boxes for you guys. So <laughs> I have some other numbers here from other other tutorials. Four inch box. Let's make it four inches square. So four inches square. And as far as our lid and our base, um, you're going to want to figure that part out. So uh, let's make it an inch deep and let's make it the same. So we're not messing around with the numbers in a way that's going to be confusing for you guys, just possibly. So if we have a four inch square box and I want one inch depth, depth that means you're going to have to add one inch. It's a four inch square, <laughs> one inch all around. So in this direction, two inches, right? Just for the sides of the box. And then in this direction, we're adding two inches. So basically we're going to do six inch square papers and I'm going to cut both of them six inches square and I didn't even notice to see if I have six inches on this one here and oh my gosh it is exactly six it's actually like six and an eighth so um from both of them and then we're going to do our own scoring to make a lid and a base and that'll be fun because honestly this thing has hash marks like everywhere so we'll be able to make those marks so we can make a box where the lid fits nicely with the base because the base has to be a little bit smaller or the lid has to be a little bit bigger right for it to fit in together um, so you can make those choices as you're creating things. But this is pretty easy. So we're just going to need some six inch squares. So let me put this guy over here. Let's bring this guy back over here. And um, it's really taut. I was going to say, can we slide this? Let me see. Um, six inches. Oh, and you know what is really nice? When this is tucked, this lip is at six inches. So that actually helps you get a good number for that one. You know what I'm saying? So if I put this down... And this slide up here feels really nice. It tucks all the way out of the way. What I wanted to see is if, okay, yeah. No, this does hold it pretty well. <laughs> I wanted to see if you can still slide around, you know? But um, it's in there. So six inches, six inches. I was like cutting away from myself, but if you want to, you know, bring it down this way, you can't, but make sure you're holding your paper because sometimes if you're coming down, it'll move, right? We don't want that. So let's do that. I'll put that scrap to the side and then we'll cut this guy. Now I'm gonna have to sit for a second and think about our 
measurement. Oh, it looks, I mean, this is like butter, really nice. Um, because for part of the box, the measurements are going to be, you know, just score them at one inch all around. But for the base, which is the black paper is what I'm using for my base, it's going to be a little bit different. Sorry, I was just like, am I super close? I forgot I closed up for the um, numbers. Okay, so on this one, this is our box lid. I'm going to score this at one inch all around. So you can either line this up so you're at one inch over here or line it up having one inch here. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this way, one inch, or this way, hit it at the one inch and then make your mark. It, this measures out to almost one and a half inches, which is nice. Because um, a lot of times, let's say you have a skinny or a small piece of paper that you need to cut or trim. It's nice to be able to see, measure it this way, hold it down, or measure it this way and hold it down, you know, so you have enough for one and a half inches there. So on this one, what I'm going to do, I'll just bring it over here to one inch. You have your one inch line all the way down right there. I'm going to pop that down. We're going to leave this cutting blade up here. We're going to bring our scoring blade and let me see. I did that twice, like one up and one down. Looks pretty good. You can see that score line. I do want to say the scoring blade is interesting because um, it's not a piece of plastic. <laughs> okay. I've seen other, you know, scoring tools on things like this. It's a piece of metal that is like rounded. It's like a wire that's around that piece. So that's never going to dull. So it makes sense that they don't have um, replacements for that because, you know, it's just what it is. So on this one again, one inch all around. So on this one, I will bring it to one inch. Put that down. And you can score all the way up to the very end because the way this tucks away, it's just so smart. Um, again, I'm getting used to how taut this thing is. Uh, one inch all around. So there's one inch. And one inch. It really holds your paper, which is really, really nice. But you gotta get used to that. <laughs> one inch. Okay. So this should leave us a four inch square box on the inside there. Uh, to do a little something that's even more fun, what I wanted to do was cut away a little of this so that we have this and there's like an aperture, you know, or something. I still left quite a bit, but let's say, what do you want, half inch? Half inch all around? Let's leave a half an inch all around. So. We have score lines. What I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this right now, just so you have an idea. So when you're making a box, you're gonna cut away certain pieces. So here where it's scored, I'm gonna cut straight up to where the score lines meet and then notch this away, just so I have a better idea of what uh, my box is looking like. So here again, up here, notch that away. Right here, notch that away, and then one more time. And what we're gonna do from now is we're just going to use the paper trimmer to help us make an aperture. Now if you have a die shape that you like, you can definitely put your die there, run it through, and then that die will have created a, an aperture for you really quickly. Um, but what I'm going to do is we know this is an inch, and if I want inch and a half, like a half inch in aperture, what we're going to do is just measure at an inch and a half. So I'm going to put my scoring tool away. At one and a half, I'm going to line this up at one and a half. But that also means I need to bring this in one and a half inches also. So I'm not going to lay it down yet. Well, I guess you can. We're just not going to pop this through. We're going to use our tool. It has a little arrow there, but it also has these little notches. And that's going to help you see where you're at. So what I'm going to do is line up that little notch. Make sure this is still at one and a half since I moved my board there. And line this guy up at one and a half. I'm going to pop it down and I'm going to bring it all the way down until it ends one and a half inches from the edge of our paper here because that leaves us a half inch. So here I'm going to start at one and a half and I'm going to bring it down to four and a half. So I'm pushing down now into the paper over to four and a half. Okay, and now I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to turn my paper, it doesn't matter, whichever direction you want, one and a half inches, line it up there at one and a half, and pop this here. And since I didn't really move this, this is still basically at four and a half. I'm going to push down into my paper. It doesn't automatically push into your paper, which is nice. Um, so you can probably mess with this a little bit 
more carefree than I am. I'm being really close, you know, careful about it. But you're gonna bring this up to one and a half, right? One and a half on the guides. These are the numbers I'm looking at. So let me just show you in case you're new to paper crafting in this way. There's a ruler there. Pick this up, turn this, go to one and a half again. And about there. And I'm gonna pop this down. We're basically at one and a half where we wanna be. And a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bring it down to the four and a half again. Right? And I'm gonna pop this up one more time. I went a little past four and a half and I saw that I did that, but that's okay. We're gonna bring it here, right there, and bring it up to the one and a half mark. Okay, so as you can see, most of them are cut pretty accurately. Just that one little bit because hold held on. Yeah, that one little bit held on. So that is our box top. Okay, scored and everything ready to go. All right, we made an aperture and all that good stuff. With this one, actually, you know, while we're here, I have some acetate, and this is actually just a carrier sheet from like an old stamp set, and I've been cutting into it, it was a big stamp set. Um, so, you know, you can recycle, you can use brand new stuff, of course. This one's a little, a little wonky. Okay, so this area is four inches square, the box top. We have one inch sides. So I'm just gonna cut this real quick while we're here. A little bit smaller than four inches all around. So like a three and seven eighths or something. So this is acetate. This thing clicks in really, really well. Um, so there and here. That should be it, right? Yeah, okay. With this one, I just had to cut a little bit off around there and there and I think we are good it's gonna fit in there really nicely underneath of course okay so we have the piece that we need for that our box base all right guys <laughs> so when we go to score this it has to be your score line I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit has to be a little bit bigger that one inch space than just one inches that way this box base is going to be a little bit smaller than the lid that goes on it and I, I don't mean like a whole quarter inch smaller or something like that because it's going to be too loose so right now i'm going to go to one inches and here's a 16th and i think that's what i'm going to use so one i'm going to line it up at one and one sixteenth, which is this one right here, this little half tick, this one would be one and one eighth, right? So one and one sixteenth. So I'm gonna line it up there. And so that means when I go to score this, the box all around is gonna be just a little bit smaller than the four inches all around, okay? So you're not making it smaller than one inch, you need it a little bit bigger. So one and one sixteenth, and of course we are eyeballing this. Um, really nice rigid like areas here to line this up and then you know what down here you can also make sure you're on the right track because you also have the hash marks here too so I'm going 16th you can go 30 seconds if you think that you want it even tighter like a really crisp fit but since this is the first time I'm making it like this I'm going to use a 16th so 1 and 1 16th I can see it's lined up pretty well and let's make our score mark next one at one and one sixteenth. Again, I'm lining it up, and I can see down here that it looks really nice and straight. Just keep that away. Score mark. One and one sixteenth. Again, I'm just gonna keep repeating myself. I don't know if I've made a box for you guys before. I know I've made stepper cards and other things where you you know make your marks here one and one sixteenth, but I don't think I've used ever before to make a box. But there you go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the same thing. This is our box base. We're just going to cut up here and make a notch right up to where the score lines meet. Okay, that's where we're going. Score lines meet, make a notch all around. I mean, I'm kind of keeping in mind, you know, having a lot of experience with trimmers, you know, 20, 25 years, whatever longer that I've been using paper trimmers and things. You know, I've had other ones where this thing is so sharp, even though it's plastic, that it cuts through the paper anyway, like a, like a, you know, cutting blade wood, and it's like, well, that's not great. So for now, I mean, what I've seen so far, it's nice and crisp, doing great. It scores really well. I mean, look at that, this is the back side. And again, I go up and back down with the score. I didn't go just in one direction and leave it at that. Um, this feels really nice. I mean, I don't even know that you need a scoring tool because like, it's so crisp, look at that, right? Crazy, 
Okay, so I'm just using my thumbs here on this one. On this guy, we're going to do the same thing, but let me go ahead, well, let's go ahead and score. I'm going to glue in, obviously, our acetate piece. You guys, my goodness. Okay, and let's see. Now you can put the glue on your acetate, but it, for me it's better to know where I'm at here. And I mean, this is handmade, so I'm trying to see where I might want this to be. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to hold that down. Essentially, when this is dry and ready, I can manipulate it a little bit more. For right now, I'm going to do the same thing with this as I'm going to do with this base. Is just put glue. I can't believe that um, my mail was out there compromised. I had no idea. I even said that to the post office lady. She was really sweet. Um, I go in there. Well, I used to go in there more often. I'm like, hey, you think they would have left me a note or something saying that you come get my mail here? And she's like, oh, they didn't. <laughs> and no, I had no idea. Um, so we're just. That's all you do. You just go around. And this is how I like to make boxes. I mean, um, there's tons of different ways. Or the way you cut the notches out. Some people like to cut them the same on one area and same at the bottom so that, I don't know, it just has a little different look when you're done. When you're done. But this is easy and there you go. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Just put glue, glue it down, glue, glue it down, right, to the inside. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys, and there's our little lid. Like I said, I just put it together the same as the box. Um, looks like the glue is pretty dry here. And so, moment of truth. Let's see if our numbers did well. Look at that. And I would say that that's probably the snuggest I would do if you're, you know, making it yourself with the one and like a sixteenth. Just adding that sixteenth to your measurement for the box space. Because if you did an eighth, it'd be too small. It'd kind of roll around there. If you did a thirty-second, like you know the other hash marks like the smaller ones it might still be too tight you know um it just depends on how you score things so i mean that to me looks pretty good it's not just like falling out i mean i'm shaking it now to get it wiggled out but i think that was pretty great so yeah i don't know that i've ever done that maybe long 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 ago i don't even think that's the case um <laughs> but there you go so what i'm going to do is go ahead and decorate the little box here um you know i had brought out some fun things let's see if I have anywhere I think is a little boo-boo and want to cover it up, that'd be good. Okay, and then, I mean, I have lots of other items. I have some other stickers in there, too, that I can kind of play with if that's my main piece. Maybe we need a little something. Uh, warm wishes, tis the season, Mary, and what does that say? Season's greetings. Merry and bright. Um... Maybe it's Christmas time. Oh, okay, that'll be cute because I was gonna do something so that on the back side you don't see all like the glue, which it doesn't matter. Obviously, you see the glue from the um, uh, sticking the acetate on itself. But I was gonna show you how we might play with these things to make it, you know, glue down some extra things without putting a ton of glue everywhere. That's cute, and just some extra bits. Let me see if I can find something else. Let me maybe another acorn, huh? I don't know. We can do another acorn. Oh, this one's little. Or pine cone, should I say. Sorry. Do this little guy here. Okay. So. I'm just going to put some glue, like, literally here. I have this guy kind of slide under there. Yeah, maybe he's be there. And then glue on the very tip of this one. So what's holding it down is the glue that we're putting on the edges. Uh, let's go over here. That looks cute. Again, I mean, if you want to put glue all in here, go for it. And then with these guys, what I'll do is maybe put some dimensionals. And we only need it here 
and at the very tip of this one. You guys, I am super impressed with this um, trimmer. I love, I think they thought about a lot of the options or how you work with it and all those kinds of things. And I, I mean, I, I don't see where it's lacking anywhere. Uh, really, really great. So thanks for watching, guys. I, again, I'll have the links for these items. And um, sorry again for my overlooking that my mail wasn't being delivered. And let's see here. And it's Christmas time right there. Okay, let me take the off here. So thanks for watching guys. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. And hopefully that showed you, you know, how to make your own boxes. How this one tool, I mean, I didn't bring anything else out, not even a scoring tool, right? And I mean, that worked really well. I love the look of this. I love the black underneath with that beautiful pop of red from the Make It Merry kit there. And then just some extra little bits here. Love it. All right, guys. And then, like I said, I put the glue under there. So you really, I mean, I have a little bit there, but that's it looks really clean from the back even. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I, again, will have the links there for you guys. I'll have images coming up. And I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.